Dialcom, a new system of telecommunications for use throughout the entire General Electric Company. The first system of its kind for industry, it provides nationwide direct dial telephone service that interconnects nearly every city in the country that has a General Electric office, plant, or laboratory. Dialcom permits employees to dial directly from their desks to the desks of others at practically every General Electric location around the country. With Dialcom, the time spent in just placing a long-distance call is greatly reduced. It is no longer necessary to dial the local General Electric operator, wait your turn to get the least line, wait while your operator calls the distant location, wait while the distant operator makes the connection with the proper extension, and finally complete the call. Now you can dial from San Francisco to New York City almost as easily as dialing the extension in the next office. Let me show you how the system operates. Under the Dialcom system, the country is divided into three regions, with regional switching offices at New York, Chicago, and San Jose. These three regions are further divided so that there are 12 sectional switching offices serving specific geographical areas. General Electric switchboards in some 240 cities to be served are connected directly by access line groups to the nearest sectional or regional center. Each sectional center is in turn connected to at least one regional center by a group of trunks. The regional centers, New York City, Chicago, and San Jose, are also connected directly with one another. This then is the backbone of the Diocom system. The service it provides is equal or superior to commercial toll call service, as most calls can be completed on the first attempt. Before I make a couple of sample calls to show you how they're handled and how the automatic switching works, I want to explain the uniform numbering plan used throughout the network. An eight-digit dial system has been adopted for all long-distance calls. This is the most important thing for you to remember about the whole dial com system. Eight digits. When you're making a long-distance call over dial com, the first digit you dial will always be eight. By dialing eight, you have access to the automatic switching network. After you've dialed eight, you will hear a dial tone that tells you that you're connected to the network. Then you dial the next three digits, which represent the location code for the city you are calling. Each General Electric location on the network is given a separate code number. When you dial these three digits, you are automatically switched to the proper location. Finally then, you dial the last four digits, which represent the extension number of the person being called. So you see, it's really very simple. Eight to gain access to the system, the three-digit location code, and the four-digit extension number. Now, there are variations to this pattern. Some extensions have fewer or more digits than four, but the total number of digits must always be eight. Check your Dialcom directory or local dialing instructions for these variations. Let me show you how it works. Let's assume I'm in San Francisco and want to call, say, Mr. John Doe in the New York office. I dial the digit eight to get access to the system. I wait for the dial tone and then dial the three-digit General Electric location code for the New York office, 222. The switching equipment in the San Jose Center will seek the most direct route to New York and if it is available, establish the connection through the New York Center to the switchboard at 570 Lexington Avenue. This, of course, happens almost instantaneously with no waiting. Then I continue to dial the extension number, which is 1234. And in a matter of seconds, the call is completed and the phone on his desk will ring. Now, let me make another call to show you different levels of switching. If you were in Phoenix and wanted to call Louisville,
you would do exactly the same thing. The routing of the call would just be a little more complex. After you had dialed 8, you would be connected with the network in the Los Angeles Sectional Center. And after you had dialed 334, the location code of Appliance Park, Louisville, the call would go directly from Los Angeles to Cincinnati Sectional Center over direct trunks put in to handle heavy traffic. Then it would be switched to Louisville. And after you had dialed the extension, the call would be completed. Simple? Yes. But what if all the direct trunks from Los Angeles to Louisville were busy? The call could still go through by means of the alternate routing feature of the system, whereby the call would be automatically switched up to San Jose, to Chicago, to Cincinnati, to Louisville. But you don't have to worry about that. The brains of the system take care of all that complicated stuff. Of course, if all the circuits are busy, which shouldn't happen very often, you simply wait a few minutes and try again. Really, all you need to know to make Dialcom work for you is to dial 8, and the location code, and the extension, and your call is completed. Now, in answer to an obvious question, it is possible with Dialcom to call someone outside the company in any of the cities connected to the network. To do this, however, you must call the General Electric operator in that city who will complete the call into the local area for you you will not be able to dial directly into the distant local area yourself. And how can you ever remember numbers for all those places? Well, unless you're a mathematical genius, you probably can't. So a directory of all company locations is provided to help you make Dialcom effective. This directory is only a location directory, however. It lists by state every GE plant or office location in the United States and many in Canada and the Dialcom location code for those locations connected to the system. But it can't show the names of all individuals for obvious reasons. So if you're calling long distance, you can find the location code for dialing in the directory. But you must know the individual extension numbers. Yes, you could call information, but that means a second call. Because after you get the number from General Electric information in the distant city, you have to hang up and start all over again. So don't be a double dialer. Start keeping a list of dialcom numbers of those you frequently call via long distance. It'll save you a great deal of time and make dialcom more convenient for you. It'll also cut down on the number of calls to information, which are calls on the network after all. Also, to make it easier for people to call you, Tell them your Dialcom number and start putting it on all internal correspondence so that your number can become known to others. There are several obvious benefits to all of us from having Dialcom. Convenience is one. It's so much easier to make a call that a great deal of time is saved. And time is money. Speaking of money, Dialcom actually represents savings for the company. As a whole, the company spends many millions of dollars every year on long-distance telephone calling alone. With proper use of the new system, savings of several millions are anticipated. Another big benefit or advantage of the Dialcom system is that it is actually a useful tool in our overall business operations. Visualize a salesman talking with a prospect. Delivery becomes a key factor, and an order hangs on a fast answer. In a matter of moments, you can get the answer while the prospect is still on the line. But of course, these benefits are only possible with everyone's cooperation. Although we lease the system from the telephone company, increased volume from unwarranted, unnecessary, or overly long, long distance calls will mean that more lines have to be leased to handle necessary traffic. And then those savings we were talking about could get eaten up pretty fast. Two, for every minute you spend on the network unnecessarily, you might be keeping someone from making a very important call. That salesman I asked you to picture a moment ago, what if that very important call of his had been delayed because all the network lines were busy 
And this guy was one of the reasons why. Well, it's wonderful to talk to you, too, Mom. It's been a long time. But you see, we have this new thing where we can, uh, well, we can, we can uh, call from the office about, uh, uh, well, about, yes, yes, uh, I see what you mean. Uh, uh, look, do you mind? This is important. Oh? Well, yes. Uh, I mean, not only is that call keeping others from using the system, but it's also illegal. Illegal? Uh, oh, uh, well, goodbye, Mr. Smith. It was nice talking to you. Yes, illegal. The tariffs or contracts under which we lease the Diocom system specifically forbid calls in which the General Electric Company does not have an interest. Also, personal calls on Dialcom instead of the public network result in the diversion of revenue from the telephone companies and circumvents the payment of a federal excise tax. Besides, company contracts with the various telephone companies prohibit them. But there are other ways to abuse the system. What about this? Yes, Mr. Howard? Get Don Jones in Phoenix for me, will you? Certainly, Mr. Howard. Mr. Jones' office. Is Mr. Jones in, please? Who's calling? Mr. Howard. Is Mr. Jones in? Well, yes, he is. But who is Mr. Howard? Mr. John Howard in the Chicago office. Chicago office of General Electric? Yeah. Fine. If you'll just put Mr. Howard on the line, I will connect him with Mr. Jones. Well, you just put Mr. Jones on, and I'll connect him with Mr. Howard. No, I'll put Mr. Jones on when Mr. Howard is on the line. Well, I'm not going to put Mr. Howard on until Mr. Jones is on the line. Now, look, honey. Look yourself. We called you. This is very important. Now, if you don't want... Well, Mr. Jones doesn't like to be kept waiting. Listen, let me talk to Mr. Jones. I want to talk to him. He isn't in. What? He'll be in when Mr. Howard is on the line. I'll wait. All right. Silly? Yes but almost too true. Not only do those secretaries waste time, time that cost money, but they tied up the system for others who might have been trying to get an important call through. Long distance is not the place to play the prestige game. But they're not entirely to blame. Their actions undoubtedly are based on past experience when this has happened. Yes, Mr. Howard. Get me Don Jones in Phoenix. Well, yes, Mr. Howard, right away. Is Mr. Jones in, please? Mr. Howard is calling from the Chicago office. Thank you. Mr. Howard, Mr. Jones is on the line. Mr. Howard? Mr. Howard, are you there? I have Mr. Jones. Oh, no. Mr. Jones? I'm terribly sorry, but uh, Mr. Howard had to step out of the office unexpectedly. I didn't know he was going out. I'm terribly sorry to have bothered you. Yes. Yes. Why, Mr. Jones! Yes, sir, I'll tell him. You get Jones yet? I want to talk to him right away. But, but... Poor girl. These last two little incidents just serve to illustrate a couple of points. Number one, if you're available to take or make a call, make it yourself. Not only does it save time, but it's far more courteous. And second, when you have a call placed for you, be on hand when the call goes through. 
Otherwise, you run the risk of making whoever it is on the other end pretty mad when he's disturbed from his work and you aren't even there. Remember, with the dial com system, it takes far less time for a call to go through. So let's have more of the proper people both dialing and answering. And when you make a call, be prepared to make the call. Not like this. Yes, Mr. Howard? Get me Don Jones in Phoenix. Yes, Mr. Howard, right away. Company yes, sir. Oh. That's a busy office. But did you notice a line tied up but not used at all? When making a call, take a few seconds to get everything you need. Location code, extension number, and any other business papers you might have need for while making the call. Well, this is Dialcom. It's quite a system. It will save you time, it will save you money. But its ultimate success is up to you. Learn how to use it, what to use it for. Use it yourself. Don't ask someone else to make or take calls for you. Time is precious on the Dialcom network, don't waste it unnecessarily. This is dial count. Use it, but don't abuse it. Hello, Fred. John Howard, Chicago office. Fine. Say, have you gotten our latest...